Heading into the last week of 2023, I'll be tracking multiple snow chances across parts of the continental United States. I'll have a detailed look coming your way next. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weather Nerds YouTube page. I'm meteorologist Craig Majeski and before we get started, I'd like to personally thank the 817 subscribers to this page. And if you haven't yet decided to subscribe, please consider it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, that way you're alerted when I post future content. And uh, leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm as I continue to try to grow this page. So please help me out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what you can expect for this episode. We're going to talk about several things. We're going to look at the current snowfall coverage across the United States. We're also going to take a look at the climate outlook, which is going to take us right out to the end of the year, right into January 1st of 2024. And then we're going to look at the overnight American GFS model. A couple things caught me there. We're looking, still tracking the snow potential there on Christmas Day and maybe another one coming in as we head toward the end of the year into New Year's. And then we'll talk about the overall snow forecast, at least from the GFS it's something to at least take a look at. All right, let's go ahead and start off first by zooming in here. We'll take a look at the current snow depth as we see the aftermath of the storm system that impacted the Northeast over the weekend. We got some of those little wraparound snows here on the backside, a little lake effect, a little bit of uplift in there. Uh, very little snow, it'll probably, you know, melt off as we head through the coming days as things are gonna to begin to moderate a little bit there. Intermount region, obviously still getting their little snowpack there as well. One thing that's concerned me has been areas of California. Not seeing a real big buildup of snowpack there. Of course, they rely on that for their water uses in the reservoirs later in the year. But I believe we're going to get some snow into those California mountains as well as we proceed through the end of 2023. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the climate outlook. That'll take us right into January 1st. So starting out with the 6 to 10 day outlook, that's going to take us from December the 24th through the 28th. And once again, most of the country uh, looking at above normal temperatures. We are seeing a little bit near normal or below here across the southwest. That's because of this next storm system, I think, that'll bring in some snows across the inner mountain region and move up through into Colorado as we head through that time period. And we continue to stay uh, above normal for most of the nation here as we go into the end of the year. This is going to take us right into uh, January 1st. You see uh, near normal here in the south, and it could potentially be a little bit cooler than that uh, through this period. That's what the American GFS model was hitting overnight with maybe some cooler temperatures coming down. And even though it's colder, it's not overly cold. We just don't see any real Arctic outbreaks uh, coming out anytime soon for us. Uh, some of the long range models going into January, maybe, but for right now, still looking at above normal across the northern tier. Now, as far as the precipitation outlook, that continues to run robust from the 24th to the 28th. Again, even though we're above normal, you still might be cold enough to get some areas to get some snow. And what's interesting about that fact is that you can get more snow at, a, say, a 31 the 30 degree temperature or 32 degrees right in there than you can if it's say you're in the mid 20s because the higher the temperature the more moisture the air can hold so even though you're looking at above normal temperatures you may actually get a little more snow potentially it just depends on where you're at especially across the northern portion of the united states now looking at days 8 through 14 uh, this takes us up to january 1st this uh, highlights a couple things you're still looking at some active weather out here on the west coast uh, obviously where they need it. And this is good news out here where you get some snows and uh, rains across California, help with the reservoirs there. And then the East Coast here, this is interesting potentially, especially if you get the cooler air in here, that's where we could potentially see some additional snows coming our way uh, with our secondary system as we head toward January 1st. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at that GFS model. So it's going to be fairly quiet for the week ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and start this model run here late in the day on Friday where we're looking at uh, some light precipitation here across areas of Michigan stretching down toward Louisiana. Really nothing to write home about. But what we're going to be watching is this energy down here across the southwest as well as this bit of energy here in the northwest. These two things are going to team up and uh, set up the snows here across the portions of the Rockies as we go into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, as we go forward into time. And we're going to be looking at some wet weather across the southeast as we go into Christmas Day as well. So again, going forward here into Christmas Eve morning, you're seeing that low kind of getting cranked up there. You see the snows kind of erupting across areas of Wyoming and the northern Colorado here. You're seeing the wet weather here across the southeast. This is going to pick up in intensity 
and uh, kind of moving across Alabama and Georgia as we go into Christmas Day. So going into Christmas Day, you're seeing the wet and rainy weather across the southeast. This is Christmas morning. Uh, still some snows across portions of the, the Intermountain region, so we're still getting a little bit of snows out here and just wet and rainy weather across the southeast uh, as we're going throughout the day on Christmas Day. Now that's going to wind out as we go into the 26th. So as I go into the 26th, another stronger disturbance is going to ride out of the subtropical there uh, along the Texas Gulf Coast. So these are the two entities I'll be tracking next week. You've got the upper level disturbance that's kind of cut off here with low with some snows across the De Dakotas and Nebraska. And you've got this system down here, which will become the dominant system. Could be, provide some active severe weather along the Gulf Coast, potentially going into the 27th. And uh, also set up a pretty major snowstorm, potentially, toward the end of of next week so as we go forward again into time here again that low kind of gets cranking here as we get into that morning um, you're looking at uh, the potential here for some thunderstorms and severe weather here across south alabama south georgia and the florida panhandle here here's the upper feature kind of cut off here for the moment but this big low is going to act like a vacuum cleaner it's going to suck it right into this as we go forward into time and this thing's really going to get energized uh, as they go out of the 27th and into the 28th. Look at the pressures kind of dropping on this. And we've got some cold air to tap this time. Unlike the last time, you've got a very cold dome of some cold air up here that's going to get pulled into this area of low pressure. And unlike last time where the northeast was kind of stuck with a lot of rain, this time I think it's going to switch over to snow if this model verifies out this far out. So you see as they go forward into time here, as they go into Thursday, this is on December the 28th. You're seeing the snows breaking out here on the northern portion of this from Maine, stretching all the way back into Kentucky, Ohio, Pennsylvania, uh, going through there. Here's the upper level feature back here. That's also going to pivot around the, the low as well. And it's going to bring some snow flurries. I don't think it's going to mount to much into the areas of Tennessee and even getting into northern Alabama and north Georgia, maybe with some snow flurries there. But look at the, where the 540 line. This is not overly cold mind you, but it is a, a cold air mass. You see in the 540 line right in here. So a lot of the country will turn cooler as we go into uh, the heading into the 29th of December. And you're seeing the snows kind of wrapping around that air, low pressure right through here on Friday the 29th. So as we go heading into that weekend, the last weekend of obviously of the new year, uh, things begin to settle down. The, the snows kind of settle down across areas of the northeast as we go into Saturday on the December the 30th and uh, still just some active weather on the west coast but otherwise things settle down but definitely cooler along the eastern third of the United States. With that said let's go ahead and take a look at those projected potential snowfall amounts from the GFS. So I think we're in pretty good agreement that we're going to see some sort of snows falling into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. There's a little bit of disagreement between the GFS and the European model as far as the exact location, but we do know something's coming. So I want to take this forward in the time. We're going to take you right into uh, Christmas Day. As you see, Christmas Eve, the snow's kind of spread out across the, the Rockies and then uh, kind of coming into Montana areas of Wyoming, getting hit pretty good with some snows throughout the day there uh, as you head into Christmas Day. So this is going into late in the day on Christmas Day. You can see the snows there spreading across areas of Wyoming, Montana, uh, going into northern northern portions of Colorado, just coming out a little bit out on the plains. So the European models had it a little bit further off toward the west on yesterday's run for comparison, just for an example, or for, to the east, I should say, uh, for comparison. So that's storm number one. That's the first snowstorm. The one behind it well, that's the one that could be a little more significant. So uh, let's go ahead and take you forward into this one as well. I'm just going to stretch this thing all the way out. Watch what happens here with this next system erupting into the 28th. So this is going starting uh, going in on the 27th into the 28th. You see in the snows kind of erupting there across areas of New England as we head toward the 31st. So uh, that's a pretty good swath of snow there uh, stretching from all of New England, stretching down the Appalachians, even getting into North Alabama, North Georgia, maybe South Carolina uh, with some pretty decent snows uh, in there. You can kind of see some of these. I can highlight some of these totals for you. Uh, you're looking at uh, uh, maybe potential of a foot and a half of snow across areas of New York, getting to Vermont, stretching down into the Appalachians, even the higher elevations of North Carolina and the Tennessee border possibly getting up to a foot of snow there and maybe even light dusting across northern Alabama and north Georgia as we go into the, say, the 28th and 29th 
of December, going to the 29th. By the 30th, everything should be kind of wrapping up at that point. So again, they've got two snow potentials that we're going to be tracking. Uh, the first one, pretty good uh, lock on that one. I think we're going to say that one's uh, likely to happen. The one further out, of course, that's 10 days out, is likely to change. It's something to just to kind of stay tuned to as we get closer to it. It's going to kind of wrap up 20. 23. All right, so bringing it back to me here, we're going to wrap things up for this edition. If you have not become a subscriber to the page, please consider it. Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I update these type forecasts. And leave me a comment or something down below. I try to respond to everybody who leaves a comment below and do that as well. So uh, that's your update for now. You guys take it easy. Have a great and safe day, and we'll see you on the next update. Bye for now.